With the passage of the SECURE Act and the changes to IRAs, there are a lot of advisors pushing the Roth conversion conversation. And in today's show, I want to talk briefly about why Roth conversions are a hot topic right now. And I also want to talk about why they do not necessarily make sense for most people. You are about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, co-hosts Dan and Tony will explore topics about finance and retirement. It's fun, informative, and most of all useful to those who are interested in retiring successfully. Now, let's begin the show. Hello and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio show with me, Dan Wendell, owner of Dolphin Financial Group. Alongside me is Tony Shore, looking dapper, looking oh, excited man. to talk about Roth conversions. This is like, I had a feeling that when I said this is the topic, you you were just chomping at the bit to talk about this. <laughs> well, I, I might not have been. I, I think that was more the Red Bull I just drank, um, the energy <laughs> drink that I just had, probably, uh, than my excitement over the topic, Dan. But uh, it is important to understand, and I hear great things about Roth IRA, Roth IRA conversions, Roth conversions. I've been hearing that a lot lately, especially with the passing of the SECURE Act. So right. uh, as usual, I, I think y your take will be unique, possibly contrarian. So, uh, you know, conventional wisdom out there, uh, you hear the same old thing from everyone. But to get a bird's eye view and kind of take different angles on things, that's what I love about uh, this show, Dan. And um, obviously, between my wit and your wisdom, uh, I think it's a winning combination, right? I agree Dead completely crickets. with that. <laughs> the wit part, anyway. Um, I don't know about my wisdom. No, I, you know, you're right. I've heard a lot of advisors I hear on um, Commercials. I see. I see commercials now for Roth conversions. Yeah. And why don't I take a step back? And we're going to talk about specifics here. Um, and it's going to be. We're not going to go too crazy with this. So you know, listeners, bear with us. But for those that don't really know what a Roth and a con Roth conversion is, let me just do a quick two minute explanation. So sure. A Roth is a type of characterization of an IRA. So an IRA, individual retirement account. There's traditional and there's Roth. And most people have traditional, you know, a 401k or a 403b eventually is converted into a own traditional IRA. But really, you're putting pre-tax money in. You're not paying tax on it. It comes out of your salary or whatever. You put money aside. And eventually, when you go to take that money, you pay tax. So that's traditional IRA. A Roth, however, is you put after-tax money in. So this will be money that you've already paid tax on sitting in your checking account. You write a check, put it into the Roth IRA. And now when you go to take that money out in the future, you don't pay tax on it and you don't pay tax on the gains either. Wow. So that's the beauty of a Roth yeah. versus a traditional. Okay. Yep. So what a Roth conversion is, is if someone has a traditional IRA, say, Tony, you have 50,000 in your IRA and you don't like the idea of having to pay taxes on that in the future when you when you grow it or when it, you know when you turn 70 and a half or I mean 72 now when you go to take that money out you can actually convert that traditional IRA into a Roth on what you fundamentally be doing is taking the money out of the IRA paying the taxes and then putting it right back into a new IRA called a Roth but I'd have so to you, pay the ta all the taxes on that whole amount I'm converting right right exactly and there's so, no way to get around that, right? Correct. So, but you have to be strategic about it. And that's what I want to talk about today. So before, so that's the difference between a Roth and a traditional. And then that's what a Roth conversion is, is taking a traditional IRA and making it into a Roth by paying the taxes. Why do people do that? Because they figure, well, I'll pay taxes now so that I won't have to pay taxes on this in the future. Ah, right? see, but, I, I hear that line and I, maybe we've used it on the show, but I hear from uh, I hear different uh, financial so-called professionals out there talking about their analogy is, would you rather pay tax on the seed or on the harvest? Well, you'd rather pay taxes up front on the seed because obviously it'll be less is the assumption. Right, 
Right. And what I'm seeing now is a lot of advisors saying, let's take your entire seed bag and turn that into a Roth and we'll pay taxes later. As opposed to what I'm going to recommend, um, the spoiler alert, is to take a few seeds at a time and convert. You know, and you get a little secret little harvest on the side. So let me let me first go back and say, w- but that's a good analogy. I like that. Again, the farmer in you. Yep, it is. <laughs> you heard that from your granddad, right? Yep. Okay. So what did the Secure Act do to cause all this hot top? You know, make this a hot topic. So basically, the Secure Act they um, passed in in December of. 2019. So it is law now. Um, it eliminated the idea of stretching an IRA. So for quick, quick explanation of what that means. When you inherit an IRA, let's say your grandfather died, Tony, and he gave you a $50,000 IRA, you have options. You could take all of it and pay the taxes. Government says, thank you. Or you could stretch it over your life and say, I'm going to take money as, um, as required based on my lifespan. So what means I'm going to take a little bit over time and you could do that for the next 50 years and thereby you're spreading the tax burden over that time. And even pass it along to my children and then they could stretch it and it can just keep going. Right. So that's the way it used to be. You could stretch it over your lifetime, but now the game has changed and the secure act has eliminated that stretch option. So now those that inherit an IRA have to take it within 10 years. So you can't spread it over your lifetime. You can still take it immediately. That's always an option. Or you could spread it over 10 years instead of your lifetime. There are some exceptions. If you're a surviving spouse and your spouse dies, you can inherit it and make it your own. Or if you're within 10 years of age of the person that died. So if you're uncle died and he's, you know, nine years older than you and left you an IRA, you can stretch that over your lifetime. But for most people, they're inheriting an IRA that's not from a spouse. They are now subject to a 10 year maximum stretch. Okay. Oh, so that it can only be stretched 10 years and then you have to take it or take RMDs or take it all and pay taxes. Right. So what people are saying well what's the problem with that the problem is taxes this is really it's a tax issue yeah this is it's all about taxes right i mean exactly roth traditional stretch right and so the idea behind a stretch was i've spread the taxes over my lifetime instead of over immediate or 10 years and if you think about when people inherit an ira that's not from a spouse they inherit it from a parent usually, and that parent is going to be 10 years older than them. So what happens is they usually inherit an IRA from a parent when they are in their own tax bracket that's high themselves. So they might be in their 50s when their parents die, and that's pr- pretty much the prime working years for people is their 50s when they're making the most, which means that they're, they're, they're in the highest tax bracket possible or over their lifetime, they're in the highest tax bracket. So they inherit this lump sum and they're like, well, if I take it all now, I'm going to just be adding fuel to the fire for my tax bill. So if I'm making 80 grand as you know, in how in the household, and now I inherit a hundred, if I take it all at once, I've just made 180 grand this year. And I got to pay taxes on that at the 180 grand tax bracket. So people like to say, well, I don't want it all now. Let me stretch it and I'll just take a little bit and, and pay taxes on a little bit each year. So that's why the stretch was so powerful is because people are inheriting IRAs at a really high tax bracket time. And so they want to take it when it makes most sense for them. I'll give you an, another practical example. <clears throat> my wife and I, uh, my wife worked for Pepsi for uh, I forget how long, at least 10 years because she got a pension and Pepsi offered her at some point, uh, years ago, a buyout. And we said, no, it doesn't make sense. But then when we moved to Florida, there was a time where we both were in between jobs. So our income that year was very low. And that's the point I said, you know what, let's take the buyout on that pension that you got. And we're not going to take the money and spend it. We're actually just going to convert it to a Roth. 
Mm. So that's what we did. And we paid the tax bracket on our income that year, which was really low. So we had basically little to no tax on that conversion. And because it just made sense during that tax year. So the Roth conversion is a tax decision based on your tax brackets and tax income, you know, your income. The fact that the secure act has eliminated the idea of stretching it over your lifetime is getting people to think more and more about, well, I don't know if I want to leave my kids or have passed down an IRA, wouldn't it be better to pass down a Roth IRA? Ah. So that's what's causing all the hubbub. Mm -hmm. Now, what is so special about a Roth is that it's tax free, meaning once you pay the taxes and let's say, Tony, you have a Roth of $10,000 and you happen to invest in something crazy that you know about that we're not going to tell anyone on the <laughs> podcast. Let's say that little idea you have about the donut shop thing. Oh, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's say that thing explodes and you turn that $10,000 investment into 10 million. If you have that in a Roth, well, just so happens that 10 million is going to be tax free. Wow. And remember where you came from. Remember who was there yeah. <laughs> when, when the times were tough, Tony. Sure. <laughs> sure. So the thought is, why not do a Roth? Why not? I would rather have a Roth because the gains are going to be tax free in the future. And anytime I have to take the money out, I don't have to pay taxes on it. They don't consider it taxable, which is why Roths are so much more appealing than traditional IRAs. Mm. So the government says, yeah, you know what? We, we see that too. And uh, we're going to make you take it over 10 years because we want our tax revenue. Yeah. We want you to, by the way, a Roth, according to the Secure Act, also has to be taken over 10 years now. You can't stretch your Roth. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh, all IRAs, I thought it was just a traditional. Oh. No, the traditional you have to take within at least 10 years and pay taxes. Roth you have to take within at least 10 years, but you don't pay tax. Right. So <clears throat> it doesn't really hurt that much. Now, just let's imagine now, again, as an example, um, and this is really relevant to people with a lot of money, which is why the advisors are touting it because people with a lot of money, they want them as advice, you know, they want to be clients right, and so forth. Right. Um, let's say you're going to inherit a million dollars. So you have a million dollars. Someone's dying um, and they have a million dollars and they're going to leave it to their four children. Um, I wish my dad had a million dollars. Actually, no, he'd be miserable. <laughs> He's better off without anything. <laughs> but I have three brothers. So if, um, if my dad had a million and died, we'd each get 250,000. Uh, that's a lot of money, but it's a lot different if I was an only child and I inherited a million dollars. Think about what my tax bracket would be then as opposed to 250. So now you could see how it only children or if you're going to leave it to one person, the, the stretch thing really can impact them uh, because instead of spreading it over their life, they have to spread it over 10 years. It can make a big difference to the government in tax revenue. Hence why the government did it. Right. Yeah. So, so what's your, I, I, how is your take contrarian to the, uh, the status quo out there or what we've been hearing from financial experts? Okay. So what the financial experts are now pushing for is let's convert your raw, uh, your traditional IRA to a Roth now. You have a hundred thousand in your IRA. Let's just do it. Let's do it while you're young. Tax tax rates are going up. Let's just pay the tax now and be done with it. And it's so much better to have um, a Roth than a traditional IRA. Now, I agree. There is a huge benefit to having a Roth versus traditional, but to do it all right away doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's better to do it when you're younger and um, you can make up the tax break over time and you can have growth. But I see a lot of people pushing, let's just get it done. Let's just do it, do it, do it. I'm a more of a, you have to do it in small increments. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the movie Shawshank Redemption, Tony? Oh, of course. Yeah. Do you, do you remember how Stephen he- by Stephen King. Do you remember how he got out of the prison? Uh, yes. Yep. By, he dug a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how he didn't get caught with all the rocks and rubble? Uh, this is very intricate questions on this movie. You said you yeah. saw it, so oh, now I'm no, I've, you. I've seen it many times. It's just been a long time. What did he do with the rubble? 
I forget. He put it in his pockets and then yes, and then emptied his pockets out in the yard as he was walking around. Yeah. Did he? Did he just make a big pile and then carry it out in the yard? No. No. He he, he did just it. did a little bit at a time. So he it was a little noticeable. bit at a time. So I'm going to call this the Shawshank Roth conversion. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The Shawshank Roth conversion. Right. So let's imagine that um, you make sixty thousand dollars and the next tax bracket is at eighty. Okay, and you have a hundred thousand dollars of conversion that you want to do, mm-hmm. and the advisor saying, "Let's convert a hundred thousand now." Yes, you'll pay the taxes, but you'll make it up in the end. My thought is, if you're making sixty and you don't bump up to the next tax bracket until you at eighty, why not just convert twenty or fifteen thousand this year, so that you're paying the lower tax bracket. And then next year, you could do the same thing. Maybe you, you only can do 10 next year because you got a raise. Or maybe you didn't make as much and you, can, and you can convert more that year. So the idea of doing a massive conversion, lump sum conversion now, doesn't make sense to me. Because it, you're, you, you have to be much more strategic about it. And you have to take the Shawshank method. Because in this case, you're not going to get caught by prison guards. You're going to get hit by the IRS. Yeah. And they're going to come down and smack you. Which are you. worse than prison guards. Right. And you're going to bump yourself up to the next tax bracket. And here's the other reason why, to answer your question, I'm a little different than the other advisors. A lot of the other advisors are talking to people, and my most of my clients are in their late 50s, 60s. So they're, they're, they don't have as much time to make up the Roth conversion taxes. You know, the whole point of it is so that the Roth grows and you can pass, you know, you can you can generate a higher return and gains in it that you then get tax-free later. Most of the clients that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, to do a Roth, they're going to do it because they want to pay taxes instead of having their kids pay taxes. So it's more about a right. legacy thing. Yeah. And so doing it all at once doesn't make sense for them either because you got to remember they're, they're on Social Security and Social Security isn't taxed up to a certain point. So you can have Social Security and not pay tax on it. But once you start making above different amounts of income, depending on if you're married or not, your Social Security then becomes taxable. So by doing a Roth conversion, you might be saying, yeah, I'm going to pay taxes on the Roth, but you might actually now have your Social Security taxed. So you can't just go willy-nilly here. You have to be much more strategic about it. Don't be tricked into thinking, oh, the rules change. I got to get out of the traditional into the Roth. Let's just get it done and, and not think about it. Why not do it over time? Why not do a Shawshank Roth conversion? <laughs> yeah, Shawshank Roth. I love it. I love it. You've come up with a new financial term. <laughs> well, it's I I um I have to say that um one of my friends, I'm not going to name him because I don't want to give him credit, but he's the one that came up with the idea of a Shawshank, but it was more about uh going out uh to Las Vegas and uh, not spending all your cash. Uh, and letting your spouse know about it. Speaking of, so it's like <laughs> Shawshank a few bucks from the uh, house every, well, the, from the kid's piggy bank over the next six months and build up. <laughs> Shawshank cash. some cash. <laughs> that's awesome. That, I mean, that's bad, but uh, yeah. Well, with friends like that, Dan. <laughs> yeah, right. Speaking of uh, keeping things from your spouse, how is your New Year's resolution going? Remember we talked about that? We did a show on it. And one of the main ones was have a weekly conversation about money with your spouse. Yep. Yep, we're on track. Yep. Yes, good. Yeah, yeah we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one. I was a. Uh, I got panicked because I thought you were going to ask me about diet and exercise. Whew, because that's <laughs> not going as well. But the the month the weekly, I know the I weekly finance <laughs> conversations are actually happening now and every week, and we're sticking with it. So, hey, if I can do that, I might be able to diet and exercise as well. Well, excellent. And yeah. what you should be, the next conversation I want you to have is talk to your wife about a Roth conversion. You know, um, when you guys file your taxes um, in April, probably, or late, knowing you. No, um, no. We're no knowing late. your wife, you probably already filed. So maybe yeah. this is a moot point. But um, start talking about, hey, we have um, this much leeway between our next tax bracket. Do you want to convert some of our IRA money into a Roth now mm. and just pay the taxes on it? Because yeah. Quite frankly, tax rates are low, relatively speaking. Yeah. And There's kind of a you know, sale on taxes right now. Right. So maybe, you know, you do a, a couple grand conversion. You don't have to do all of it. A conversion is not all or nothing. You could do $2,000, uh, yeah. you know, and you pay tax on that. You know, maybe you pay 
uh, 200 bucks tax on that. And, but now you have a $2,000 Roth that you can turn into 2 million and be happy because you don't pay taxes on it. Boom. I like it. That's awesome. Well, this has been a great discussion. I think it's important that people understand these distinctions and some of the strategies and options that are available uh, other than, you know, the status quo of, oh, convert everything to a Roth now and bite the bullet and pay all the taxes. But yeah, uh, maybe yeah. incrementally is better, the Shawshank method. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, Dan, uh, it's time to wrap things up. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? We're going to patent that. Shawshank. No. Um, so if you have an inherited IRA, someone died already and passed it on to you and you're taking RMDs over your lifetime, you still do that. This is not going to be something that... Uh, you got to change now. You got to start taking it within, you know, in the next 10 years. Um, it's just going forward. It, you got to be thoughtful about it. So if you're thinking about a Roth conversion, you've heard an advertisement or you're like, do I do this? Does this make sense? I run the math. I do the math. Tony, you say it all the time. You got to do the math. Um, yeah. I'll do the math. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll go through the different scenarios and say, hey, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense. And we'll probably have to involve your tax preparer or CPA, but that's okay. This is all part of the process. This is what we do. Just don't rush into this because usually it doesn't make sense for most people. It usually only makes sense for a select few. And then those others, it's usually something you do over time. Yeah. Yep. The Shawshank method. Absolutely. So go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com, connect through me that way, or give me a call. We'll talk about it. Not a problem. 888-508-5935. Thanks, Tony, for a great show. The topics on this show are wide ranging, yet relevant to people approaching or living in retirement, like me. If there is a topic you want to hear on the show, head to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and contact Dan to request your topic or to share your opinion. Dan Mundell or Dolphin Financial Group are not affiliated or endorsed by Social Security or any government agency. Everything discussed on today's show was for informational purpose only. Since everyone's situation is different, some things may not apply to you. The materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources. We cannot be 100% certain that they are accurate. You should really talk to my dad or someone from Dolphin Financial Group before trying to implement these ideas or strategies.